Soil degradation is a decline of the soil quality or quantity. So either we're um, losing soil or we're degrading it to a point that it's not doing us any good for growing crops. So there's three categories that we can use for degradation, biological, geological, and chemical. So biological is when we're losing that organic matter. Uh, losing the microorganisms that drive our matter cycles, like the nitrogen cycles. Uh, we're losing plants, um, the stabilizing plants that have the roots to keep the soil from eroding. Geological is anytime we change the physical structure. So if something happens with the drainage or how permeable the soil is, um, that would be considered geological. And then chemical are changes that lead to uh, one of the following, acidification, calcification, toxicity, or anything that increases salinity or reduces nutrients. So we'll look at some examples of all three of these. All right, so human activity causes degradation. As our population grows, we need to produce more and more food. So our farming techniques are unsustainable. When we use irrigation, uh, we're creating problems, uh, causing leaching, causing salinization, erosion. Uh, we're overgrazing, which is causing desertification. Some of our grasslands are actually turning into deserts. Deforestation, when we remove um, trees to clear the land for more crops. So anytime you remove vegetation, uh, that's going to increase soil erosion. It can increase desertification. Um, also, when you don't have the plants there to absorb, what happens is you end up with more toxic soils as well. Irrigation can do that if you have contaminated groundwater. And then as we've looked at before with our salinization lab, we know that irrigation water um, has dissolved salts that can lead to problems. So erosion is when we take sediments and move them from one place to another. So losing topsoil is a big deal. Um, topsoil has a lot of that organic uh, material that makes um, the soil absorb water. It has the nutrients they need. And the sediments that get carried away cause problems elsewhere. They clog ditches or boat channels. They um, get trapped by dams and reservoirs. Soil is renewable. But remember that wet climates is going to happen a lot faster than it is in colder or dry climates. Uh, the pictures there at the bottom, the one on the far left, is the Dust Bowl, uh, where in the Midwest some of our farming practices led to us losing a large amount of topsoil. And the second picture is kind of the after. This map shows kind of the global areas where soil degradation is an issue. The areas that are in the dark red or dark orange are areas of serious concern. And you can see we do have a good amount of serious and some concern in the U.S. We're losing about 7 to 21 percent of our topsoil um, from what is currently being used for cropland and as potential cropland. And that's um, on a decade scale. In the U.S., about a third of our original topsoil has been eroded. Um, either from farming practices or deforestation. And even though soil is renewable, we're eroding it about 16 times faster than it can form. So we are not using it sustainably. And remember, if we aren't using something sustainably, that is what degradation is. All right, so we've talked about irrigation. Uh, that leads to salinization. So those dissolved salts um, are left behind when the plants draw in water or the water evaporates. And that stunts crop growth as we saw with our radish seeds. So some of the things that we can do to um, alleviate the problem is let the land sit for two to five years um, and let nature um, help get rid of the salt. We can have a drainage system put under uh, our cropland and then flushing the soil with low salt water. Uh, but when you flush the soil, that can create its own set of problems. Um, the water table starts to rise and we get water logging. So what that looks like, the top two pictures are salinization. You can actually see the salt. Um, and then the bottom two pictures are where they've used flushing to kind of alleviate that problem and then that results in water logging. 
some of the things that we can do to reduce soil erosion, um, some farming techniques um, in areas that need to produce food that do not have flat land, we create flat land by terracing. It's basically cutting in stair steps on the sides of mountains because you're going to have less erosion on flat land than you do on slopes. Um, so on each of these terraces, that is flat land. Contour farming um, is plowing instead of going up and down the slopes, you go around the slopes. And that is going to help prevent runoff and erosion as well. Strip cropping, um, alter, instead of leaving um, a field empty for a year, uh, which we do sometimes because certain plants use nutrients and they use it up in the soil and so we have to let the land replenish. So instead of letting a field sit empty, we can alternate crops in rows. So you might have corn in one row and you've got uh, soybeans or grass or something else in the next strip. Uh, because what this does, um, it helps reduce water runoff. It also helps present uh, prevent the spread of pests because if you've got a pest that eats corn and you have one large field of corn it's going to spread very quickly but if it has to go through a strip of another crop that's less likely to happen. Um, certain plants uh, use nitrogen and some plants restore nitrogen so you would alternate um, which crops you grow based on that as well so that one is using the nutrients the next is putting it back in and that's another reason you don't have to leave your fields empty for several years. Alley cropping or agroforestry is uh, using trees um, in strips and they provide shade so you don't have to use as much water because you're cutting down on evaporation. Uh, the trees are usually going to be fruit trees or fieldwood trees so they can also be harvested as well. The trimmings provide a natural fertilizer which we call green manure is when um, you have plant material as opposed to animal manure to use as a fertilizer. Because remember we talked about how leaf litter can add uh, that extra bit of organic material and nutrients to the soil. Building windbreaks or shelter breaks around the edges of fields cuts down on wind erosion. And usually it looks like long rows of trees in between or around the edges. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is soil fertility. Um, if nutrients are lost by erosion or leaching, uh, we can restore it using fertilizers. Organic fertilizers is when we use either plant material, so that, that green manure, or animal material, animal manure, or compost, where we take um, anything that's biodegradable, so food scraps, paper, paper towels, anything like that, um, and let it partially decompose. Inorganic uh, fertilizers have no organic material. They have the nutrients that are needed like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, but they don't have that organic material that helps um, absorb water um, and just increases the quality of the soil. So advantages to inorganic fertilizers, they are easy to transport, they're easy to purchase and apply. Um, you can get the exact amount of each nutrient you need. As you can see on this bag here, I've got it's 5% uh, nitrogen, 10% phosphate, and 5% potassium. Disadvantages, once again, does not add that humus, that organic material. So the soil becomes compacted, um, which decreases its porosity, so you have less water, less air being taken up by the plants. And usually it's those three main nutrients that we find in inorganic fertilizers, well, whereas organic fertilizers are going to have, um, you know, 20 or so more nutrients than the inorganic. And then we've talked about eutrophication when nitrogen and phosphorus run off the land, they can create overgrowth of algae and water. So this is a study that was done um, by adding phosphate and lime to the soil. Lime changes the pH. Um, and then over here on this side, they didn't do anything to change the pH. They didn't add any fertilizers. And you can see the difference. So inorganic fertilizers are um, necessary if you don't have uh, the nutrients in the soil. 
Um, I mentioned with strip cropping, um, alternating the plants, we can do that from season to season as well. One year you would plant corn, tobacco, or cotton. The next year you would plant uh, like soybeans or barley or something that adds nitrogen back to the soil. Um, and then that helps with pests too because you're changing the target each year or each season.